Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cohesity YouTube channel. My name is Vic Camacho and I am a Principal Technologist with the Technical Advocacy Group here at Cohesity. And in today's topic, we'll be discussing what Zero Trust is and some of the benefits that come with employing Zero Trust security. Before we start, just a quick look at the agenda so you know what I'll be covering. First, we'll cover the evolving IT landscape and some of the challenges that come with that. Then, we'll jump into learning what Zero Trust is and cover some of the principles around Zero Trust. Next, we're going to talk about some of the benefits of employing a Zero Trust framework and why it's important today. And finally, we'll close this out with a summary of some key takeaways. Before we get into learning what Zero Trust is, we should first discuss today's IT landscape. Today's IT landscape has necessitated the need for stronger security. The old perimeter network security is no longer secure enough given today's new IT landscape. The older network paradigm was based on providing security at the perimeter. But once users and devices were authenticated, were given implicit trust to resources and data on the inside. Given today's sophisticated threats, such as socially engineered phishing attacks, this type of security design leaves organizations vulnerable. Now let's talk about the new IT perimeter. Think about where your data, applications, and users reside today. The pandemic forced users to work from home, and many, if not most, have not come back to the office. Data is now being accessed via SaaS-based web applications, and these applications have access to much sensitive data. Vendors and contractors can also require connectivity, further exposing organizations to potential data threats. Many organizations have also adopted a hybrid or multi-cloud deployment model that has data residing in the cloud. Today, data can reside in your on-premises data center, at remote locations like branch offices, and as mentioned, in the cloud. This has caused mass data fragmentation, which makes it challenging to manage and protect data. Furthermore, many users connect back to the corporate networks via mobile devices like their phones and laptops. All of this has drastically increased the attack footprint for cyber criminals looking to gain access to corporate environments for nefarious reasons. This is what has necessitated the need for zero trust. So what is zero trust? Well, first off, zero trust is a security framework. The concept of zero trust has existed for some time now, but it was popularized by John Kinderweg in 2010 while he was a principal analyst at Forrester Research. Since then, Zero Trust has gone through several iterations as the IT landscape has changed. Zero Trust was created based on the realization that traditional security models operate on the assumption that everything inside an organization's network should be implicitly trusted. Zero Trust, on the other hand, requires all users, whether inside or outside the organization's network, to be authenticated, authorized, and continuously validated. Zero Trust validates for security configuration and posture before being granted or maintaining access to applications and data. In other words, trust nothing, verify everything. Zero Trust Main Principles Today, I will be covering seven Zero Trust principles. Employing these seven principles can help mitigate risk exposure, maintain compliance, and avoid costly breaches. These are Zero Trust Devices, Zero Trust People, Zero Trust Workloads, Zero Trust Networks, Zero Trust Data, Zero Trust Visibility and Analytics, and Zero Trust Automation and Orchestration. Zero Trust Devices. Today's workforce is connecting back to the corporate network via their mobile phones, tablets, and laptops. This gives cyber criminals a bigger attack surface where home security controls aren't as stringent as corporate environment controls. An attacker can gain access by compromising a user's credentials at home and then gaining access to the corporate environment from a user's home network once a connection has been established. To help with this challenge, ensure that every device is authorized on the network continuously validated, and employ a timeout value so that users and devices need to reconnect. Visibility. You can't manage devices if you can't see them or have awareness of where they are connecting to. For connected mobile devices like corporate laptops, an effective mobile device management or MDM solution can help keep track of user devices and quickly disconnect them if there is foul play. 
This measure reduces the risk that an employee device brings onto the network. One thing to note is that MDM tools are even more secure when combined with an identity access management solution, allowing users and device identities and policies to work together with more granular controls. Zero Trust Workloads. As mentioned earlier, data and workloads can reside within your on-premises data center, at the edge like branch offices, and in the cloud. This causes data fragmentation. Data fragmentation is the proliferation of data across multiple data locations and makes managing and securing data challenging. This also increases the attack footprint for cyber criminals. As they say, you can't protect what you don't know. Consider utilizing a data discovery and classification tool. This tool will aid you in determining where your production data is and also classify data that is sensitive in nature. If sensitive data is found in an untrusted zone, you can move that data into a trusted zone where there are tighter security controls to help protect and secure the data. This can also help you meet regulatory compliance that requires sensitive data to be placed in trusted zones only. Zero Trust People As stated by the 2022 Data Breach Investigation Report, compromised credentials are the leading cause of data breaches today. Authentication based on username and passwords is no longer sufficient, as credentials have been proven to be easily compromised. Zero Trust Security requires strong authentication using multi-factor authentication, or MFA. MFA means requiring more than one piece of evidence to authenticate a user. Just entering a password is not enough to gain access to corporate network resources. Users who enable multi-factor authentication must also enter a code sent to another device, such as the user's mobile phone, thus providing two pieces of evidence to prove they are who they claim to be. This stronger form of authentication helps to drastically reduce data breaches due to compromised credentials. Another principle of zero trust security is least privilege access. Least privilege access means giving users only as much access as they need to perform their duties. No longer is it sufficient to give unfettered access to all areas of the network. Least privilege access reduces the cyber attack footprint should users' credentials become compromised by a malicious actor. Least access privilege is accomplished by the use of role-based access controls where user identities can be tied to permissions and policies to determine what level of access a user receives. Zero Trust Networks the old paradigm is no longer viable, given today's cyber threat landscape. The moat around the castle is your perimeter firewall, and the castle your corporate IT environment. Having a hard outer shell but a soft inside leaves your IT environments vulnerable to today's more sophisticated attacks. The traditional network perimeter is still required, but is only a step one as it is not secure enough for corporate cybersecurity. A zero trust network is micro-segmented. Microsegmentation is the practice of breaking up security perimeters into small zones to maintain separate access for separate parts of the network. Microsegmentation provides more granular security and dynamic adaptation. This makes it easier to block lateral movement of threats on the network to contain and isolate a potential breach. When you couple microsegmentation and least privileged access together, this helps to drastically reduce the blast radius of a breach or malicious code like ransomware by limiting what a bad actor or malicious code has access to. Next, we have zero trust data. Data is going to be your most important asset. It can contain your intellectual property or that thing that gives you an edge in business. In healthcare, data can contain a patient's protected health information or PHI. This type of data is highly regulated and under regulatory control. Exposing this type of data can subject healthcare organizations to further scrutiny with audits. Leaked customer and or patient data can cause a person's identity to be stolen. Leaked data can also cause damage to your brand and loss of consumer confidence. To help mitigate this threat, consider using trusted zones for sensitive data with granular security controls to keep data safe. Also, consider deploying a data discovery and classification tool. This tool can help you discover where sensitive data is residing and whether it's within an untrusted zone where security controls are not as stringent. 
data discovery and classification tools will also enable organizations with the ability to tag sensitive data and form policies around them to prevent the data from being removed or migrated to unsafe zones. This can aid in the prevention of data exfiltration and also help with regulatory compliance that dictates where sensitive data must reside. Next, Zero Trust Visibility and Analytics. Empower your SecOps and IT Ops teams with complete visibility. Consider the use of Security Information and Event Management, or a SIM tool. SIM is a set of tools and services offering a holistic view of an organization's information security. SIM tools provide real-time visibility across an organization's information security systems. SIM tools can also provide event log management that consolidates data from numerous sources. SIM can also offer a correlation of events gathered from different logs or security sources using if-then rules that add intelligence to raw data. It can also provide automatic security event notifications. Most SIM systems provide dashboards for security issues and other methods of direct notifications. This tool can greatly aid in visibility into what's happening in the environment and can provide you with visibility into network and file activity as well. This principle also suggests the use of advanced technologies such as AI to automate the detection, protection, and encryption processes. Artificial intelligence, or AI, can provide advanced threat detection. AI can detect for anomalous behavior in users and inform you when users are accessing resources they are not authorized for. AI can also detect anomalous behavior in data and inform you that the potential for malicious code like ransomware is in play. This can aid you to detect and investigate threats much earlier, thereby recovering earlier if there is an existing cyber threat. And finally, zero trust automation and orchestration. Automate the mistakes out. People are prone to errors. It's a fact of life. Employing an automation and orchestration solution can help you avoid these potential mistakes that can cause costly outages. Automation and orchestration can help in preventing configuration drift that takes your systems out of an organization's hardened compliance policy. Over time, IT systems go through multiple updates and upgrades. This can cause configuration drift that takes your systems out of compliance. Employing automation can help you keep your systems in tip-top shape and avoid vulnerabilities. IT ops and SecOps teams are typically fast-paced. It becomes challenging to keep up with the demand of keeping the organization's IT environment updated and safe. Automation and orchestration can ease the strain on your IT staff by removing repeatable, tedious, day-to-day -day tasks, allowing IT staff to become more strategic in nature. Let's talk about some of the key takeaways and benefits of using Zero Trust. First off, Zero Trust offers protection against both internal and external threats through the use of role-based access controls and least privileged access and continuously authenticates, authorizes, and validates users on the network. Zero Trust also provides increased visibility and monitoring to devices and users through the use of tools like AI-driven threat detection and SIM tools. Zero Trust can also help you mitigate the threat of data exfiltration exposure through the use of encryption and trusted zones, ensuring that data stays where it's supposed to stay. Zero Trust can also help you with data privacy by ensuring you know where your data is through the use of data discovery and classification tools. Zero Trust also helps to support regulatory compliance by helping to ensure systems are compliant through the use of automation and orchestration. And last, but certainly not least, Zero Trust can help to greatly reduce the blast radius of an attack through the use of principles like micro-segmentation and least privilege access. This is especially important given the rise of ransomware attacks today. And that's it. I hope that you have found this video on Zero Trust helpful. If you would like to learn more about Zero Trust, check out the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, or NIST's publication of its Zero Trust Architecture publication, NIST 800-207. I'll leave a link in the video description below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about Cohesity, please visit us at Cohesity.com. 
Thanks and have a great day.